Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. You know, I was going to continue the reloading series. Um, I've been doing a lot more research and trying to connect with Lance to get the interviews going. I think uh, because the podcast isn't growing very much, and this is more of a hobby cast, I think I'll quit assailing you with everyday content and try to just do Monday, Wednesday, and I'll try to drop one on Thursday. That will land for Friday so that you can listen to me, you know, prattle on about what I know about the 2A and why it's awesome. Tonight I have a really good hopeful story for us. Um, Colorado is now safe for their assault weapons ban for now. Um, They used basically what we've been doing in New Mexico for years now um, to win their, uh, their fight that they have. So I'm going to call this the pathway to victory. And how we win in this 2A fight is by being the biggest advocates we can um, every day to show, you know, average everyday people that the 2A has a name and a face. That's number one. Okay. Number two is to bug the hell out of your reps and your senators and your state house and your state house of representatives, your state senate. Um, buildings. Bug the hell out of them. Call them all the time. Um, When they start proposing these stupid uh, ideas that, hey, we're going to ban this or that, or hey, we're looking at some sort of gun restriction that kind of violates your rights, um, you need to make that known. You know, at the federal level, you can try doing this, and to some extent it works, but at the local level, if you register enough calls... And that, that means you actually have to get on the phone and call your rep. Oh my gosh. It also means email them. Um, you do both um, to all your reps that are in your area. Um, and then you start hitting the committee chairs um, for these places that are, you know, the committees that these houses and senators use to pass bills. See, every bill has to go through a committee before it goes to the floor for a floor vote. So Colorado narrowly didn't have this happen. I mean, this could have went very, very badly if the uh, Colorado Colorado, uh, citizens hadn't stepped up and said, no, enough's enough, okay? And then they got backing and some voices, you know, Ava Flannel, uh, Brandon Herrera, uh, Guns and Gadgets. A lot of people have talked about what's going on in Colorado that highlighted that, hey, you're about to lose your rights, and it's time to stand up and fight. Well, and then you have FPC, you have Gun Owners of America, you have all the 2A activist groups that actually do something, and now that the NRA is finally losing enough money and enough membership, and they've lost Wayne LaPierre, you're starting to see them do more of this too, um, because the tide is turning. Remember, this is an election year. And when it comes to election years, this is a bad time for people to try to ban things. Because as much as people like to think that uh, you know banning is the right idea, it sets a bad taste in the mouth of people, specifically voters, when it comes time to be reelected. Uh, so much so in Colorado's case, there's a uh, Tom Sullivan, Tom Sullen, something like that. He's a representative that was on this chair uh, for the committee for the Senate for this bill to hit, and uh, he said, "Hey, this is uh, this is going to impact us during election time." This is how we win. You know, Brandon Herrera is running for a position uh, for the Texas government because the rhino that's there, and I don't want to say rhino because it really doesn't matter what party you're in, the anti-gun politician that's there who said he was a pro-gun politician stood up and said no um, several times when it came, when rubber met the road, he said no, I'm going to back anti-gun legislation. Well, this didn't stand. Brandon being a man of his word, he stood up, went to bat, and he's now in a runoff election that it's probably going to cost that other dude his job um, because people like you and me who listen to this type of stuff, who are into the gun tube space and love the Second Amendment, we're not going to stand for having our rights taken away from us. You know, so yes, we're going to always be in this fight or flight mode. And I would tell any of those people in Colorado, welcome to the fight. You guys have the same problem we had in New Mexico. You've let population centers overwhelm the rural areas uh, and start taking away your rights 
and you ended up getting the behind the blue wall. Now, I called it the blue wall for a reason. Um, Democrats, um, I hate to put a party face on it because there's a lot of people that will cross the aisle and vote with those Democrats for anti-gun legislation. But by and large, the ones that are calling for anti-gun legislation are Democrats. Okay, So what they're trying to do is disarm you because they're afraid you're going to stand up and fight for your rights. Um, this should be no different than having a First Amendment fight. Um, you know, you do have a right to stay, say exactly what's on your mind to the government. Um, the same thing goes with the right to assemble, the free right to assemble, the right to uh, worship who you want to. These are all part of the First Amendment, and those are already under assault, and all you have to do is turn on YouTube, any streaming service, and look at the censorship levels that have happened. You know, think back to the COVID stuff. I use that uh, ref frame of reference a lot. But think about how the quote-unquote misinformation about the shot was spread around when, you know, four years on, we're finding out that, hey, there was something to be said about those quote-unquote misinformation pieces. You know, you do you, and I had to do, you know, I've been fully transparent. I've had to take the shot because of the jobs I've had. Um... I didn't have to take the shot. I willingly took the shot to keep the jobs I had. Um, so that's the difference in me versus a lot of other dudes. There's a lot of other people that told them to roll it in a cone, fought the battle on their own, had natural, got a natural immunity by getting infected, and they're doing just fine. On the converse side, there's a lot of people that died during the COVID stuff because they had those uh, symptoms, and I say symptoms those other pieces that in the, in their health that aren't good for them you know i'm overweight i'm working diligently to fix that but that's a prime risk factor for death with covid okay so this isn't about covid but what i'm talking about is think about the censorship just around that one issue now think about the censorship that's been going on around other politicians other speakers you know other people that have been on youtube who voiced their opinion that wasn't popular and didn't line up with the popular narratives. Whether it's the shot, whether it's an election, whether it's uh, being pro-2A, whether it's uh, being pro your rights, you're pro, you know, being able to speak out and say this is not a good thing. Uh, those people have been censored, and we've seen it in real time. And the American people, the American voters, aren't stupid. You know, they, they see this, and they don't react as rapidly as I would like them to, but they're waking up. And that's what we're seeing, bar and large, across the country. You know, I'm a big fan of Peter Zeehan. Um, he's a demographic and economic analyst, but I disagree with him about how the election could go. Um, the election, the presidential election specifically, he seems to think is going to go overwhelmingly to Biden based off of the last election, not the presidential election, but the midterms, because Biden, uh, not Biden, Trump has pretty much pissed off the middle of the road people just by being who he is. But money moves mountains. And if you can look at the past four years and say you were not better under Trump than you are right now, you're not paying attention. Look at gas prices. Look at the food prices. You know, how much has your grocery bill gone up in the last year versus what it was under Trump? Now, it's the money, stupid. And for someone like Peter to be so uh, brilliant about economics, he's missing a very key point here that there's something called the wisdom of the crowd. And while I, I firmly agree with what he says, that the polls are probably skewed, um, because they show Trump's going to win by 10 points. Uh, the point being is that there's enough people that will vote their wallet before they'll actually tell you who they voted for. And in this case, I think that voting for Biden is a bad plan. You know, the economy alone tells you we're in a different situation. Look at the assault on your rights. Look at the disruption on college campuses that are happening for people that are actually supporting Israel. You know, this is God's chosen country. 
you know, his home place. This is something that we kind of, as Americans, have a covenant with, whether we want to admit it or not. Now, I'm not for uh, these proxy wars or keeping the the flow of fight of, of cash and money or money and weapons to these areas to keep a fight going. But this is the one area where I have some conflicted pieces about that because I do believe we should keep Israel as an ally um, because I believe, being a Christian myself, that it's biblical, okay, that you need to defend Israel. Now, should we be dumping money into Ukraine? No. Yeah, it's a proxy war with Russia. Well, is that the same? isn't that the same thing? Yeah, it absolutely is, and I'm being contradicting myself, and I know that. But I have to go with my faith on this one. Um, how does that relate to the 2A? Well, with everybody spinning up all these uh, these really intense conflicts, it's bubbling over into our country, and you're seeing this great schism of right and left again. And you're seeing people that are supporters of Israel but aren't a fan of interventionist war. And you're seeing people that are huge fans for Hamas and not thinking about the repercussions of what they're actually saying. These people tell you that they're not for genocide in any way, shape, and form, but they're pro-Hamas, and Hamas is for genocide of the Jewish people. So it's contradictory, just like I am being here when I tell you I'm not for interventionist wars, but I do support Israel. Okay? Why this matters in the 2A space. Let's get back to that. You'll find that most 2A people, in general, usually have some sort of frame of reference for faith. Okay? There are never, I've never been to a gun show that there wasn't a prayer, that there wasn't a pledge of allegiance to the country. Um, There's been always been talk about not liking certain types of law enforcement agencies but supporting your very local guys that are actually doing the good work that we actually see. You know, the ATF is responsible for burning 75 people, two pregnant women, and killing uh, countless children for Waco. So the ATF doesn't have a really great uh, brand name as far as I'm concerned and anyone in the 2A is concerned, and they haven't had it for a long time. Um, That said, there's some good news on the ATF front. Um, So, what's going on in the ATF? Um, If you've had to file a Form 4 or Form 3 for a SBR or for a suppressor, it used to take nine months to a year to get approved, but because of Congress's actions this last session, and I'm talking at the national level, where they called the ATF on the carpet and said, hey, you need to fix this or we're going to defund you completely, it's now, reports are saying that it's taking less than a week to get your Form 3 or Form 4 approved. Now, there's some caveats to that. You have to file it digitally. Um, I would prefer the NFA doesn't exist, period. I would prefer the ATF doesn't exist, period, Um, at least for firearms. But here we are, okay? A week is still a a better situation than nine months to a year for approval for something that should already be legal anyway. But this means that if you follow the process, so you have to have the digital form, so you have to use a digital version of that. There can be no mistakes or errors on it, and you have to use the government's form of payment for it, which is an electronic version of payment. So you have to register with them to do all that fun stuff. You do that, and it's taking a week nowadays for a Form 3 or a Form 4 to clear. That means a suppressor is now on the table. So you could get it within a week instead of waiting nine months to a year to get your suppressor. That means if you have a short-barreled rifle um, or you want to build a short-barreled rifle, you have the right candidate, you have everything in line, you do it right, you get the pictures, you do all the paperwork, you submit it correctly with no mistakes, and that's key. So you're going to have to do some double-checking on your paperwork here, your digital paperwork, and you line up your purchasing power correctly using the digital form that they're asking digital format that they're asking you to use it's going to clear um, most of us we're not bad dudes you know we're we're going to pass a background check 
it's usually the ATF's fault that a delay happens because they, <laughs> if you were to gun show, um, and I say that because it's a boomer type event, uh, even though we're in certain areas you're seeing more and more younger kids come, but in New Mexico specifically, it's a boomer type event. You're seeing more and more younger kids in other areas come to this, so we're trying to influence the next generation. And if they see those cool things like suppressors or short-barreled rifles, and they can get to into them within a week, hey, we're sitting pretty, okay? Um, some other bad, some bad news, um, which is kind of sad, but it's kind of an interesting take, is New York is trying to go after the Glock pistol specifically. Now, why is this good? Because they've basically admitted that they can't solve the problem, so their answer to solving a problem is to ban it. Now, what's the problem? If you have a Glock pistol, it is the most popular pistol in the United States, period. There's no arguing about that. Glock 19s are have been the number one selling pistol for years now. You can buy a little device, illegally I might add, that converts your Glock pistol into a fully automatic gun. Okay. What they're saying is that they can't find a way to stop those devices from coming into the country. Bad guys do bad things. We know this. This is why New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union started, was to let people know that not all of us guys in the 2A are bad dudes, and we want to keep our damn rights. Keep your damn hands to yourself. Okay? Is that bad dudes are going to do bad things. I've experienced that firsthand. I've talked about the school shooting I've dealt with. You know, that was a bad person doing a bad thing. There is nothing about that that could have been prevented because you can't read everybody's mind. And there is a lot of mental health issues in this country that you can't account for. You know, they're going to keep trying, but they're going to fail. And this is why our path to victory is becoming a little more clear. But it requires us to get involved, to actually get up off your butt Go to the capital, not just your city, but go to the capital of your state and make your case known. Speak in front of those committees. If enough people show up, that alone is a big deal. But now they have to have a moment where they listen to all those people show up. And what that does is it delays any action they have, one, and two, it lets every one of those people that are in power know that their constituents don't agree with this. And that's how we change the landscape of the two-way. Like, share, subscribe, most importantly, be great.